Welcome to Verbal to Visual. My name is Doug Neal, and today I am taking notes on Elizabeth Gilbert's interview on the Chase Jarvis live show. I actually just finished the first stage of that process. I watched the video version of the conversation on YouTube while taking index card notes, pulling out the individual ideas that were most interesting to me, capturing important phrases, occasionally adding little visuals or making certain words or phrases stand out, and I'm now at the stage where I'm deciding what I want to do next. This is the type of conversation where I don't feel a need to map out the entirety of what was discussed, but instead pick a few of the ideas that feel the most relevant to me and maybe do something to uh, solidify them in a way, make them a little bit more visual so that in the days, weeks, months, maybe even years to come, the a couple of ideas that I choose to spend more time with now, that those are the ones that might stick more solidly in my mind and help me apply those ideas because there's a lot of good things that came from this conversation about living a creative life that uh, I think will be helpful to my future and maybe to yours as well if you are also interested in living a creative life. And I think I've identified the two sections of that conversation that I want to spend a little bit more time on. One, was around the idea of learning in public, an idea that's near and dear to my heart because it's how I got started with sketchnoting and graphic recording, documenting my progress learning this skill on a blog that I started specifically for that purpose. And I actually built a resource called Learn in Public. So I'm always interested to hear how creative professionals like Elizabeth Gilbert, what they think about this idea of sharing what you're learning while you're learning it in an informal way, the general idea of documenting what you learn in more or less real time, both for your own benefit and potentially for the benefit of others. So there are a few index cards here that relate to that topic. And then later in their conversation, uh, Elizabeth talked about her ongoing dialogue with capital L love and how journaling is a part of maintaining this healthy dialogue. And there's a lot of resonance there because of my experience with morning pages as described by Julia Cameron and how I've kind of adapted that approach and added a few other things and incorporated that into my daily journaling practice, which precedes my work every day. And there was this powerful back and forth that Liz shared and I kind of liked the idea of this title of Liz and Love, a dialogue, and then just capturing that back and forth that she shared on the spot, because I think it really exemplified what the role that that type of externalized dialogue in a uh, daily journaling form, the, the role that that plays in her life and how powerful something like that might be for others. So those are the two follow-ups. Let's see how it goes. So I think I just got to a pretty good place here. I was able to bring together a handful of ideas that came up mostly within one section of this conversation, bring all that into a singular image with kind of one primary visual component being this life path that represents someone just living and the sections where there's an insight. Gilbert talks about the short distance between when she learns something new and then feels the need to share it. So I felt like that would work well on some sort of a life path. She also talked about getting to this compassionate alignment with reality. So I kind of made the connection here between the act of learning in public, helping to maintain that compassionate alignment with reality 
reality because of the fact that if you learn in public, I think you're more likely to treat yourself the way you would treat a friend. And that helps you stay aligned with reality as opposed to going off on this delusional path where maybe negative self-talk takes you too far away from reality. And how, yes, that's scary, but as Gilbert said, she's 1% more curious than afraid. And that's all that takes. That There's just the slightest imbalance toward curiosity in order to keep doing this sharing and making. And then also highlighting that this path, this reality is just one reality. It's just her reality. And that recognizing that might be a key to a thing that she mentioned about not feeling the slightest responsibility toward her readers or followers. And that's why she's actually able to stay relaxed and do the type of sharing and love those folks the way she does. That if she felt that sense of responsibility, that would be too heavy. And for me, at least, that connection kind of corresponds to, this is my path. I'm going to keep following it and tell stories about it along the way. And you can follow along with me if you'd like but you don't have to. So this is an example of something that I often look for when trying to bring together multiple ideas from a single conversation or a single book or a single talk, finding a primary image to work with, but then surrounding that image, connected to that image, bring in not just one core idea, but try to also bring in a variety of ideas from throughout that conversation or talk or book to kind of find a way to integrate them into a single core idea or a single core visual metaphor. I think that's a thing to be on the lookout for when taking visual notes like this. And what I'd like to do next, now that I have this image out, I think I want to make a separate short video where I sketch this out and paraphrase the ideas in it that came from this conversation and came from Elizabeth Gilbert. I think I want to make a short video that highlights these ideas. So that's why I went through and numbered the order in which I want these different components to appear. So for this numbering here, this is when I'm kind of transitioning from not just creating a sketch note for myself, but also now wanting to make a video that highlights this interesting set of ideas that I found to be impactful and that others might find to be impactful as well. And I think I'm going to try recording this right now to see how it goes. So I just finished up the sketch here. Feel pretty good about how it turned out. It's a little bit cluttered, but I'm glad that I chose to stick with this size of paper here. I thought about going and grabbing the big poster paper that can fill the full desk, but that felt like a little bit too much of a barrier to actually get this recorded today. And with the videos that I've been making lately, I'm trying to cut out as many of those barriers as possible and using this size of paper that's just a little bit easier to, to grab a new page and work with. Um, I think I'm going to try to stick with that for a little while and maybe, who knows, I could start using multiple sheets of this size if I need to. I bet that will come up at some point. But for now, I like that I was able to uh, get it all onto a single page here. And the next step for me is to record some audio in which I talk through these ideas in more or less the same order that I sketched them out with the idea of creating maybe just a two minute video that highlights this idea, this set of ideas, lets people know about that conversation that Elizabeth Gilbert had with Chase Jarvis. Maybe talk briefly about why I find these ideas to be significant, but I really do kind of want to keep that video uh, short because I think that might be another style of video that I might like to create here. They're essentially these explainer type 
type videos where someone is sketching out this set of ideas and maybe you only see this frame. I'm not yet sure if I want to put my face on camera for that one because the purpose of it will be to highlight these ideas. But I do also find it interesting to contextualize them or share why these ideas feel so impactful to me. Uh, so I might play around a little bit with including that type of commentary in addition to the core idea, or maybe I'll just highlight these ideas. We'll see. But I hope this kind of quick iteration from these index card notes taken in the moment, then going to this quick sketch that I spent maybe 10 or 15 minutes on, to then this slightly more polished but still not perfect version of this. I hope that you found it useful to, to see those steps uh, because you might like to do something similar with the books that you're reading or the podcast that you're listening to because I do think that there's a lot of value in each of these stages. There's value in those index card notes, there's value in this rough sketch, and there's value in this. And I think with each layer that you go, each step that you take in that direction, you're just making it more likely that these ideas will stick and that you'll put them into action. And once you get to this point here, this is kind of the type of visual note that I think is worth saving and referencing in the future. So that's why for me, it's worth it to put the time I did into creating this, because this is something that I can look back on and remind myself of these specific ideas, but then like likely the tangential ideas that came up that I didn't necessarily represent on the page here, but because of the way in which I took all of these notes and the way some other ideas are connected to these, I think those tangential ideas are likely to be triggered when I look just at this. So I hope you enjoyed what I imagine was the short video of these ideas, but then also this behind the scenes so that you can maybe take some or all of the techniques that I shared here and apply it to your work. If you would like a deeper dive into the development of your sketchnoting skills, then check out the courses available at verbaltovisual.com, which I've linked down below. In those, I walk you step-by-step -step through building the variety of skills that you bring together during any note-taking session like this. So do check those out and stick around for the next video. I'll see you then.